Hey, welcome back to the Ready State. I want to talk about something we're seeing a lot of, which is, hey, I'm air squatting. Foundational movement, fantastic. Ultimately, when we, we use the air squat as a diagnostic tool, and we call it our uncompensated squat, I should be able to squat, hip crease below the knee with my feet straight, without lots of change in the spine, without deviation around foot pressure, et cetera, et cetera. You've heard this before. But the reason we choose that air squat as our base squat is that ultimately we are trying to simplify the system and make it so that the tie goes to the runner. What I'm saying is, notice that when I did that squat, my torso came forward. And so it ends up looking very much like a back squat or something's on my back and I'm trying to manage this and I don't have to have my knees come forward a ton. So the way you can think about it is if you're squatting and want to keep the shin vertical or more verticalized, torso is going to have to come forward. That's the, the nature of the game, otherwise you're going to fall over. Especially if you're keeping constant that foot pressure between the ball and foot and your heel. Now, if you want your torso upright, shin has to come way more for vertical. Which means we start to get into cues like Dan John, squat between your feet. Or every Chinese Olympic lifting cue of all time, that if I want to just descend straight down, my knees have to go somewhere. I have to go somewhere. So my knees go out and they go forward. That's the bottom position. They go out enough to maintain my arches, but I have to have enough range of motion to do what? How I express that knee for. Now what ends up happening is that as people come into this, we don't have a clue. Right? So we're trying to appreciate that ultimately I'm trying to solve a movement problem and I'm trying to do so as an unskilled person by trying to keep my torso up and doing something that looks like that back squat. And so notice what happened to initiate that position. And the reason this is so sort of salient to us is that when we put a lot of load in or a lot of speed load or we start to add volume in, this position is less effective at handling those large loads. And what we know is when we start to introduce shear and start to move towards end range of the spine, either flexion or end range extension, potentially we lose a lot of system stability. Musculature starts to just become positionally inhibited. I start hanging more on my ligaments and, and bones to do the structure. And in bad situations, we see that, for example, an extension represent as sponding, right? Too much trauma through the spine. So I'm very stable here, and I'm also very stable here. My tissues can handle those end ranges. And so we try to say, hey, look, we're trying to avoid silliness when I overflex or overextend. And by the way, my personal view on this thing is I think we see way more overextension driven dysfunction and pain in the gym than we do flexion related pain, comma. What we're seeing is that people are saying, oh, I'm gonna have to hold something in a front rack position or at my chest, and to do so, I'll keep my torso upright. And so what we end up doing is moving away from this mid-range position where I can handle large loads through the spine axially. So what we have is we have what we call the two-hand rule, right? So xiphoid process, pubic bone. And if I initiate, what I'm really doing is not loading the hips and hamstrings. I'm initiating by using my spine as a second set of hips. So the problem with that is, again, this is just as less effective. I can't create intra-abdominal pressure. I can't take breath. I can't even flex my abs that effectively. So what we're seeing is when we're trying to get people to squat with their torso upright, one of the drills we often see is that we put people up against the wall. And we, it's called affectionately or unaffectionately known as squat therapy. Now the idea here is to try to constrain the environment. Because if I do a forward squat, or do my classic back squat, I run up hitting the wall. So what we're trying to do is constrain the environment. That makes good sense. But the problem is with this, is where do my knees need to go to keep an upright torso? They have to go forward. So if I don't have the range of motion in the ankles to handle a very upright torso squat, then, and my torso is going to need to come forward to solve this problem because I don't have the ankle range and I'm going to initiate this way, I will solve the problem by creating more hip joints for myself. And what I've done then is introduced another set of variables. So how people are solving this problem as they get close to the wall is say, no problem. 
I will totally squat right next to the wall. I'll stick my hips back and back squat. And in the meantime, have a system that doesn't handle load, shear, translate, effective creed athleticism. In fact, if you saw me cruising around the world in this shape, you'd be like, what's up with that guy? It's a little bit weird. So the idea here is you have two choices. You can either hold the weight here, you can hold the weight here, you can put it here. And that means you can either have your torso vertical or you can have your torso forward or somewhere in between. Those are the bookends of position. But if you're going to squat with your torso upright, knees are gonna to have to come forward. If you're gonna squat with more verticalized shin, I'm repairing my ACL, I'm back squatting, I don't have range of motion in my ankles. I'm using this stimulus to have a slightly different squat outcome, whatever it is, then torso is gonna to need to come forward. And if you're creating a movement solution by using the vertebra to create additional leverage and mechanical choices, that clearly is not as effective as using your hip joint, which is very, very capable of handling very, very large loads. And the reason we're curious about this is that practice makes permanent. Practice makes the thing that I practice is the thing that's going to express itself when I'm fatigued and tired. And what we're trying to do is have our athletes simplify the system. Let's not use our spine as the only mechanism by which we can change our height and variability, right? Because we know that it's not as effective a strategy in the long haul. So put injury aside, put disc aside. Just know that it shows that you're unskilled. And if you want to be unskilled to exercise, by all means, do that. And we don't have to be perfect as we begin, but appreciate what it is you're seeing. If you're putting someone up against the wall and asking them to squat, and you initiate, they solve that problem by creating a ton of stripper butt, guess what? That's on you as a coach.